Good morning. I'm glad to be welcoming each of you this morning to worship on this Epiphany Sunday. As you're watching on Facebook or YouTube this morning, I hope that you will like this experience. It's helpful to us because it gives us a record of your attendance and helps everyone know who's worshiping with us. Feel free to leave a comment as the service goes through. Those are always nice to see. Well, we have come through Advent, Christmas Eve, the first Sunday of Christmas Tide, and later this week we come to the Epiphany. And today, in celebration of Epiphany, it's Epiphany Sunday, where we acknowledge the coming of light into the world through the Christ child and the bringing of gifts by the wise men. Now, here in my dining room, I am using a backdrop of a nativity that's very special to Carolyn and to me. It belonged to her parents. Now, don't get nervous, Chip. I'm going to move the camera. I want you to see these figures close up. Here's the shepherd boy and the sheep. Here are Joseph and Mary and the baby. The cow is lowing. The donkey is there that Mary rode, but in the center of the scene is the baby Jesus, arms open wide to welcome these guys, the wise men, the magi, the three kings. Well, it is a Sunday that we celebrate light coming into the world and the gifts that were brought the word epiphany, we've all said it, I've had an epiphany, or ah, it suddenly dawned on me, or the light bulb just clicked on. All of those referencing the light that Jesus brought into the world. And my goodness, if this isn't a year when we need light. Well, it's also a day to acknowledge the gifts brought by these three. We can see that each of them has something we know that they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Not very traditional or popular gifts to babies these days. I mean, when was the last time any of us went out and bought frankincense because a baby was born to give us a gift? But for us, it's not as important what they brought or really what we bring. It's that we give something. And um, at this time of year, there are a couple of musical pieces that I, I love that help identify some things to give that symbolize the importance of it. One is this little opera, A Mall and the Night Visitors. I was in it in seventh grade when I had a really high soprano voice. And when our church did it several years ago, I was one of these guys. But it tells the story of these three travelers encountering a poor widow woman and her crippled son. And at the end, the little boy gives all he has, his crutch. And he can't walk without his crutch, but yet he gives it to these men to take to Jesus to offer it as his gift. And miraculously, the boy can walk again. There is also a carol that we sing, typically today, called In the Bleak Midwinter. And what an appropriate carol for today uh, talking about frosty wind made moan, the earth hard as iron. But it's the third stanza that is important to me. It says, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what I can, I give him. Give him my heart. That is what we are called to do at the end of this season, at the end of this awful year, at the beginning of this year to come filled with hope and promise, at this hour in worship. May we consider giving the Christ child our heart to be blessed. And in the giving of our hearts, may it become a blessing to others around us, we worship.
Hello? Could I get a little light in here? Okay, maybe a little more than that? Whoa, that helps. Today I'm sitting in the closet underneath our basement stairs. Maybe you have a closet like this. It can be a little bit creepy, but having light helps me clearly see things that would cause problems for me in the dark, like running into storage tubs or rolls of bubble wrap or extra chairs or maybe even spider webs. It's amazing how light can make me so much more comfortable. Today, we're celebrating a little early because on Wednesday, it will be Epiphany. On Epiphany, we think about two important things. First, we remember that the Bible tells us that around the time Jesus was born, a very bright star appeared in the sky. Some people living far away from Bethlehem who studied stars somehow knew that this star was a sign that the King of the Jews had been born and that his birth was a big deal. We call these ancient stargazers magi, or sometimes wise men. They trusted that this sign of the star was true, even though they weren't Jews. Plus, they went on a long, difficult journey following that star to see Jesus. And when they got there, they didn't just visit him, but worshiped little Jesus. They didn't give him blankets or toys either. They gave Jesus gold and resins from two different kinds of plants. And these resins were good smelling, sort of gummy liquids called frankincense and myrrh. We think of these as pretty strange baby gifts, but they show that the Magi knew that Jesus was a valuable king and that he would have both wonderful and difficult things happen to him. Giving these unique gifts, traveling all that way, and trusting in the sign of the star took a lot of courage. Have you noticed how many of our Christmas decorations involve light? We use lots of candles, strands of Christmas lights, stars, and sparkly glitter. And all of this twinkling reminds us not only of the regular stars that the shepherds saw, or the special star that the Magi followed, but these different kinds of light also remind us that light gives us comfort and guides us. Darkness feels uncomfortable and scary, but light helps us feel safe and see what's around us. And light is the second thing we remember on Epiphany. One of the special names that we have for Jesus is the light of the world. All of the stories about Jesus in the Bible help us see just like light helps us see that everything Jesus said or did proves he is God's son. And these stories help us see how Jesus is a light that comforts us with God's love and that guides us in how to live in this world, even today. One time when Jesus was teaching, he said that we are also the light of the world. Of course, we don't have the same knowledge and power as Jesus, but he knows we can show God's love to others. We can offer comfort and guidance if we have Jesus' light and love inside of us and then let it shine for others to see and feel. Doing that sometimes takes courage, just like the Magi, but it spreads Jesus' love and makes us happy. I'd like to leave you with a song that should make you feel happy right now. It's performed and produced by missionaries associated with the Liebenzeller mission in Germany. You will see people all over the world having fun as they sing about Jesus' light and love. You may not understand all their words, but you can still sing along. I hope this song stays in your head all week and throughout this whole new year. May it remind you to let Jesus' light shine through you, no matter who you meet or where you go. Let it shine. This is 
to let the mind. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Donde yo estoy, yo la dejo brillar. Donde yo estoy, yo la dejo brillar. Esa lucecita, yo la dejo brillar, brillará, brillará, brillará. Petite lumière, je laisse le nuit. Brillons-moi, brillons-moi, brillons-moi.
Let's pray together. God, on this first Sunday of 2021, we thank you that you are a God of new beginnings, of redemption, of hope, and a God of peace. Thank you for helping us make it through this difficult year. Thank you that you've carried us through the uncertainty of deep waters, through the flames of trials, through the pain of hard losses. We are constantly aware of how much we need you, your grace, your strength, your power working through even the toughest days. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our greatest treasure, not just at Christmas, but for the whole year through. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds toward you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us, for you never leave us. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives, that we can be assured your heart is towards us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. God, there are those among us who are grieving the loss of loved ones at a difficult time of the year. We ask for your grace and peace to Carmilla Bland in the death of her brother Anthony, to Kenny and Cheryl Williams in the death of Kenny's cousin Larry, to Karen and Steve Trishler, Derek, Alex, and Katie at the death of Karen's father Wes, to Aaron and Tom Langford in the death of Aaron's father Earl, to the family and friends of Laura Matley, to Dorothy and Keith Bracewell on the death of Dorothy's brother, Ronald. We rejoice with Bruce and Jennifer Thoman, who welcomed Clara into our world on December 15th. And we pray for healing grace for Randy, Keith, Janet, Bill, Ron and Rita, Mike, Annette, Carol, and others who need your healing touch. God, we choose to press into you today. Without you, we would surely fail, but with you there is great hope. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for bringing us into this new season. We will look forward to all you still have in store. Amen. As with most beloved events, the Christmas store at 2 BC looked very different this year. What remained the same was the generosity of giving and serving by church members and the gratitude that came from all of the families who participated. We reached out to families who had shopped over the past two years and after determining that they had not received Christmas assistance from another agency, offered them to choose two $20 gift cards per child from 12 stores in the Liberty area. This allowed them to still have a choice in the gifts they gave their children this year. Volunteers then packaged the gifts with candy, a handwritten Christmas card from a church member, and an Advent devotional in a fun gift bag. Volunteers, maintaining physical distancing, took turns over two nights handing out the gift bags as families drove through the Port Cacher. This year's store reached 50 families with a total of 186 children. Through the more than generous contributions of you, our 2BC family, we were able to fully fund this $8,000 plus endeavor and still carry some money over to 2021. The families were so thankful we were able to offer this opportunity to them this year, though we are all looking forward to the full Christmas store experience in 2021. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe this star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened 
and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had happened. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. If you're watching this, it means we made it. It means it is no longer the year 2020. I think we can all let out a collective sigh of relief. One year ago, I was standing at a different church at the podium preaching a different sermon. It was a sermon all about the hope for the upcoming year. We talked about resolutions and we talked about things we wanted to let go of in 2019 and things we were looking forward to in 2020 and how we were going to live into the life that God had called us to. It was full of hope and it was full of optimism and all the different circumstances that we were going to have in the upcoming year. Little did we know. One year ago, that hope was easy to come by. But looking back, I'm not sure that anything I said in that sermon was actually viable because so much of the hope and so much of the optimism was 
circumstantial based on situations and expectations and plans, so many of which failed us over this last year. It was an easy sermon to preach. That hope one year ago didn't cost me anything to stand up and talk about. But 2020 has taught me a lesson and I'm not gonna make that same mistake again. Today we're talking about the story of the Magi, which is honestly one of my favorite stories in all of scripture. It's only found in Matthew chapter two. And I love this story because there's still so much mystery to it. There's so much to wonder about. There's so much we don't know. Tradition tells us one thing, but the text actually paints a completely different story. We don't actually know how many Magi there were. We don't know exactly where they came from or exactly when they arrived. We don't know how long they had been traveling. We don't even know if they were all men because some evidence suggests that they might not have been. And what about the star? This story tells us that the star, they saw it at its rising and that it went before them until it stopped over the place where the child was as if the star moved in front of them. But even with all of the unknown, and the mystery and the wonderings about this story, I think it still has some great lessons to teach us as we look forward into our own unknown, into the unknown of the year 2021. The first lesson is this. We have heard it said that good things come to those who wait, but this story shows us that good things come to those who wonder. I don't know how many of you saw the, uh, the Christmas star the other night when Saturn and Jupiter kind of lined up right next to each other and it was just right above the horizon in the sky, right as the sun set. It was a big phenomenon. Apparently you could see it from all over the world and I hope a lot of you did. Well, my mom called me that night and she was just so annoyed that people were calling this the Christmas star. Why can't we just believe in miracles anymore, she said. Why can't we just believe in a God who can do supernatural things, who can make an incredible, miraculous star to guide the way of the wise men? Why do we have to explain everything away? And on the one hand, I think she has a point. I do believe in a miraculous God. I do believe in supernatural things that I cannot and do not understand. And I do think we strip something away from our faith when we have to explain everything with reasonability or circumstance. But I also pushed back on her a little because I said, couldn't it also be possible that our incredible God set these planets in motion from the beginning of time to create this great conjunction exactly when it needed to be created to lead those who were paying attention to the child that they needed to be led to. Couldn't God have still used the natural world to create this incredible phenomenon that those who noticed it, that those who were paying attention were able to see the significance of? So maybe the question for us isn't, was this star a natural or a supernatural phenomenon? Maybe the question for us is, do we pay attention? Do we notice? Do we wonder about the world around us? Do we ponder events and circumstances and situations in our own lives and in the world to understand their significance or to understand how God might be moving through them? Elizabeth Barrett Browning has this wonderful quote that says, Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit round it and pick blackberries. Do we see that earth is crammed with heaven? Are we the people who look for the heaven within our earth? Do we seek to notice, to wonder, to consider, or are we just the kind of people that go about our day, go about our lives, keeping our heads down, doing our business, and never take a moment to pause, 
to see what God is about. I think it's getting harder and harder to pay attention these days, and I think that's a side effect of the fact that it's getting harder and harder to wonder, to ponder things. And part of that is because we have these great new inventions called phones. And at our very fingertips, quite literally, if there's a question that we have or a fact that we don't know, all we have to do is ask our phone. And it can give us just about any answer that we're looking for. Growing up, watching TV with my dad was super annoying because we would be sitting there watching a show and my dad would say, hey, you know, that actor, he looks awfully familiar to me. What else has he been in? And I'm just rolling my eyes going, dad, I don't know. And my mom will come in and say, oh, was he the guy from that show? And dad say, no, I don't think that was him. I think that was that other dude. Oh, well, who was this guy? Well, what is he doing? So my parents would get into these discussions about who this actor was and what else he had been in and they would usually argue with each other and it would turn into some ridiculous stories. All I wanted to do was watch my TV show. But looking back, you know, those lighthearted arguments were usually so ridiculous and they were so funny. And I learned a lot about my parents. I learned about what their life was like growing up and what TV shows they liked and who they had crushes on when they were teenagers, like what celebrities and things like that. So it was actually really interesting, even if, kind of annoying but then came our phones and specifically the invention of internet movie database which is a website and also an app where if you're wondering who that actor is or what else they've been in all you have to do is type in the name and it pulls up everything that they have ever done so as my dad and I would watch tv and dad would say I recognize that actress what else has she been in I would say look it up on imdb dad And that was it. No more conversation, no lighthearted disagreements or ridiculous arguments, no more laughter. It really just kind of put a stop to all that interesting, if annoying, fun. Maybe we've become too accustomed to having the right answer at our fingertips. Maybe we've become too accustomed to the way things have always been done or the way we've always done them. Maybe if we would let ourselves wonder more, we would be the people who could start noticing things, who could start paying attention. Maybe we'd notice things within our connections or within our situations, within different experiences that we have, where God is trying to move, trying to talk to us or moving in the world that we just aren't really able to pay attention to right now. Maybe we need to re-figure out how to wonder. The Magi let themselves wonder. They saw this star at its rising. They noticed it. They paid attention to it. They wondered at it so much that they loaded up and started a long journey who would take them who knows how long to get to that which was on the other side. You know, Moses was a wanderer. His wondering started with a bush on fire and ended in an encounter with God. The Magi's wondering started with a star and ended in an encounter with God. What might our wondering start with? And how might we encounter God through it? So the first lesson that the story of the Magi teaches us is that Good things come to those who wonder. And the second lesson is this. Hope is a thing with talons. Emily Dickinson famously said, hope is a thing with feathers, which gives me the image of a bird soaring upward into the heavens. But my hope hasn't really been soaring lately. It's been really difficult to picture it as something that just effortlessly floats upward. A few months ago, my daughter and I were playing out in our backyard and we noticed a small like baby woodpecker. It was on the side of one of our trees. It was a young tree, so the trunk was really thin, the branches were really small, there was absolutely no nest in that tree whatsoever. So we looked around other trees, we tried to find, you know, is, is there a mama woodpecker somewhere? Where did this baby come from? And we had no idea. As we got closer, 
that woodpecker, it didn't fly away, but it did move. It dug its talons into the side of that tree and it kind of shimmied around to the other side away from us. And as we, you know, cautiously peeked around to try to get more of a better glance at it, it dug its talons in again and it shimmied back around the other way. It stayed there for hours. I don't know if it was hurt or if it didn't know how to fly or if it was waiting on something, but it stayed there for a long time. That bird didn't fly, but it also didn't fall. So even though Emily Dickinson may describe her hope as a thing with feathers, I think 2020 has also showed us that hope is a thing with talons. Sometimes it doesn't just effortlessly soar upwards. Sometimes it has to be hard fought and hard won. Sometimes hope has to be the thing that digs in and holds on despite the circumstances, despite whatever is happening around us. I often wonder about the Magi's hope. What kind of hope must they have had to load up their camels after they see this star and head out on a journey. They couldn't have placed their hope in circumstances because they didn't know what circumstances lay ahead of them. They had no idea what the road would hold. They may not have known how long it was gonna take them to get there. They may not have totally known what they would find on the other side. They didn't know if thieves or wild animals would threaten their safety as they traveled. They had hope that spurred them on toward exploration. But what exactly did they put that hope in? Because I think that same unknown is what we learned about in 2020. That same unknown is what we're looking toward in 2021. We can no longer be the people that put our hope in circumstances or expectations or plans because we've seen how those can come crashing down around us. In the same way that the Magi couldn't put their hope in the road ahead because it was unknown, we can't put our hope in the year ahead because it is also the unknown. So what do we place our hope in? Well, the Magi couldn't put their hope in the journey. They couldn't put their hope in the road that lay before them. But they could put their hope in that star in that light that shined steady and solid as they went over rocky terrain or rough terrain or various countries. That was the steady, solid thing that guided them no matter what circumstances they were facing on the ground. And that's true for us too. As we look into the unknown of this upcoming year, We have no idea what lies ahead of us. We don't know if the road is gonna be an easy one or a tough one. We don't know what circumstances will come, what circumstances won't come, but we still have that same guiding light, the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. The one who promises to never leave us nor forsake us. The one who promises that he is God with us. Jesus tells us in John 16 that in this world we will have trouble, but that we can take heart because he has overcome the world. So as we look into this next year, let's not be the people who only place our hope in circumstances. Let's not be the people who only have the feathery soaring upwards hope since we know that that might fail us. Let's be the kind of people whose hope has talents that can dig in and hold on, not to fleeting circumstances, but to the one solid, steady, guiding light of the world who is with us no matter what comes our way in this next year. Now, to be fair, There are things that I put my hope in. A vaccine right now being first and foremost on that list. And I think that's okay. It's okay for us to have hope in these other things, these things that do have feathers. As long as we remember that that is not the basis of it all, that our deeper hope has to be the thing with talents. 
the thing that is not based on circumstances or situations or outside sources, but the hope that comes from the light of the world, the light shining in any darkness that we may encounter in the next year. My favorite version of We Three Kings right now is sung by a group called Rend Collective. And they sing the song as we all know it, but then they add this little mini chorus at the end of it. And here's what that mini chorus says. It says, in the dark, we're not lost. When it's hard, we're not lost. Don't lose heart. We're never truly lost. And then it goes back into star of wonder, star of light. So as we look into the unknown upcoming in 2021, in the dark or when it's hard, we are never truly lost because we have that same steady, solid light guiding our way no matter what terrain we're going through down here on the earth. So let's remember as we look into that future, as we contemplate this story of the Magi, that good things come to those who wonder and that hope is a thing with talents. to try and it's called a time of greeting the wonderful things happening at Second Baptist Church kickoff 2021 is close so very close it is new community groups are popping up so sign up if you will have tried chair yoga with Kathy or missions by CBF field personnel well here's your chance to take a glance out at the community groups coming this year. Yeah, you wanna turn the page? Are you new to 2BC? Be our guest virtually January 10th. Get some coffee and tea and Zoom with Pastor Jason. He really hopes you can make it. A great delight to chat with him, to talk and ask your questions. 
It's Coffee with the Pastor. Register through email now or shortly after. Turn the page. Hear ye, hear ye. New members, please do hear me. Listen closely, I do ask. Connections class is coming fast on Sunday mornings. It's a blast. January 17th all the way to February 7th. Connect with us Sunday mornings at 930. Discover your giftedness and how you can serve with it. Bonus points for signing up early. Deadlines, deadlines are approaching quite soon. The Family Service Project donations for Hillcrest Hope are due quite soon. We are giving housewarming parties in a basket and birthday parties in a bag. Deliver to the Welcome Center or schedule a pickup with Pastor Angie. She'll pick them up really fast. Close, 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 you see, is what Clay County needs. Gently used children's items, child sizes 6 through 16. Deliver straight to Clay County Clothes Closet on Tuesday or Wednesday morn. Or schedule pickup with Debbie Lane and she'll come to your front door. Sharing is caring and caring is sharing. Food share Wednesday is near. Let's stock the pantries at in as much. Just take your donation straight there. It's wonderful to read to you in our Sunday meetings. And this is Emmett and Langston signing off from our time of greeting. Friends, thank you for joining us for our service today. I do pray that as we look forward into 2021, that our hope will be a thing with talents. Today, I'd like to leave us with a blessing that one of my seminary professors always left us with. It's written by a man named William Sloan Coffin, and maybe you've heard it before. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short. The grace to risk something big for something good. And the grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your mouths and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. May God look upon you with joy and give you peace. Amen. We are singing for the Lord as our light. We are singing for the Lord as our light. We are singing for the Lord as our light. We are singing for the Lord as our light. We are singing. singing for the Lord is our life.